Okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> We're going to be looking at uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Give you a minute to get there. Uh, all right, take your eyes, chapter eight, amen. Um, this is a um, an interesting uh, a chapter. Here. Seven ends with uh, God challenging the people about being obedient and not just having a lot of ritualistic um, activity, you know, not going through rituals, um, not just, uh, uh, you know, pr uh, fasting and doing those kinds of things, but yet um, they wouldn't be obedient, un obedient unto the Lord. And so God was challenging them about their obedience. And so he says that fasting is hypocritical. Going through all the rituals are hypocritical if we're not going to um, be obedient, be obedient unto the Lord. And so um, in chapter eight, uh, it's interesting because uh, in, this, in this particular chapter, uh, the Lord uh, gives out uh, so many, uh, so many, so many promises. Amen. And um, he really releases the word of the Lord. You know, um, in verse one, he says, thus says the Lord of hosts. And then he begins to enumerate um, what he's going to, what, what he's going to do. Uh, and then uh, if you go down to verse four, he says again, uh, well, verse three, thus says the Lord. Verse four, thus says the Lord. Verse six, thus says the Lord of hosts. Verse seven, thus says the Lord of hosts. Verse nine, thus says the Lord of hosts. And if you just, you know, go through that chapter, you'll see the Lord continually, you know, speaking uh, to his people and releasing so many promises um, unto them. And it's really, uh, you know, confirmed uh, and, and, uh, and sealed by the word of the Lord. Thus says, thus says, thus says the Lord, uh, 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 thus says the Lord of hosts. And he starts off uh, in chapter one, in chapter eight, uh, really introducing uh, himself with a title that uh, declares his power and majesty. He says, you know, um, verse one, again, the word of the Lord, again, the word of the Lord of hosts, amen, uh, which signifies his, his, his power and majesty, the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of heaven's army, all right? And, uh, and he says, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor, I'm zealous for her. And even though God was you know, uh, rebuking, correcting his people, oftentimes bringing judgment, even allowing uh, the people of God to go into captivity for seven years, uh, this is what the Lord uh, says about them. It's, I'm zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor, I am zealous for her. And it's interesting because uh, that word zealous in ancient ancient Hebrew come from the idea to become intensely red, to become intensely red. It has a thought of a face becoming flush with deep emotion. And this shows that God is passionately concerned uh, for his people. Uh, he's passionately, passionately concerned for his people. You know, not, not some haphazard relationship, but he is passionately concerned. Hey, even, even the people that mess up, even the people that don't get it right, even the people that have been rebellious, you know, um, he is passionately concerned for us. He has great, you know, just as he had great zeal for Israel, uh, he has great zeal for us. And so in verse three, thus says the Lord, he says, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Now, a lot of you know, this is a prophetic book, so um, 
uh, we're not going to go into all the uh, nuances of the prophetic, but, you know, uh, he's speaking, uh, you know, uh, he, he's speaking in terms of what he's going to do uh, sometimes immediately, but what's going to happen in the future. And, and, and uh, but the challenge is, hey, keep living right until he brings all things to consummation. Keep doing, keep honoring him, keep living righteously uh, until God brings everything to an end. And a lot of a lot of what we see in Zach, Zechariah is not going to come to pass until the millennium. You know, when God comes, you know, to establish His kingdom uh, 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 forever. And so uh, He says, "I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord's host, the holy mountain." And He He, he speaks about you know returning, uh, uh, returning, returning to Zion. You know, coming coming back allowing his presence to be, you know, uh, surely manifested. Uh, I will return to Zion and live in Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem, look at this, will be called the faithful city. Okay, they have been unfaithful. You know, they have been living in rebellion, but they'll be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of armies will be called the holy mountain. And so the Jerusalem that existed prior to the captivity cannot be compared with the Jerusalem of the future, okay? A lot of this is, you know, um, future, futuristic. When God comes to stop his, his reign, uh, his, uh, uh, his messianic kingdom. And so, but it's, a, it's just a reminder for the people <clears throat> that God cares for them, that they need to continue to do what's right, that God would protect them, that God would care for them, and that God would give them a place of faithfulness and security. He says, look, in verse four, thus says the Lord, okay, um, old men and women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem. And this is, this is restoration. This is future things that are going to, to take place. Each one, of the, each one with the staff in his hand, because of great age, the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing uh, in the streets. Verse six, here again, thus says the Lord of hosts. If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, will also be marvelous, come on, in my eyes, said the Lord of hosts. And so uh, God has said, hey, look, if this thing is um, going to be mind boggling to you, hey, just think about how I, how, how I see it. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be a restoration. It's going to, uh, Jerusalem is going to be something that had never been before, you know, that, that, that city of truth, that mountain of the Lord, uh, God's going to dwell. He says, I'm coming. I'm going to dwell in the midst of you. He's not going to be estranged. He's not going to be afar off, but he's going to be dwelling right in the midst of them. Uh, he says uh, in verse uh, 7, thus says the Lord, behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and righteousness, okay? He continues to uh, give out these promises. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Here's the encouragement. You know, God is still encouraging his people. Let your hands be strong. You have been hearing, you who have been hearing in these days, these words by the truth of the prophets who spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. For before these days, there were no wages for man and no hire for beasts. There was no peace from the enemy for whoever went out or came in. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. You know, and so, you know, God reminds them a lot of what had, what had transpired, what had, what had happened was a result of their, uh, their disobedience. Amen. Uh, 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 God's punishment. Uh, Indeed, it's going to be uh, behind them. He says, look, let your hands be strong so, so that uh, you can finish the work, you build the temple. And so uh, just as he resolved to bring retri retribution on the ancestors, so now he's resolved to do what is good for Jerusalem. Okay, there's gonna be a shift, there's gonna be a turnaround. You know, uh, God's gonna, he's going to, he's going to make amends. And so, uh, uh, yeah. Look at this, verse 11. But now I will not 
treat the remnant of his people as in former days, says the Lord of hosts. That's a promise. God gives, he's given unto them. I'm not going to have the same relationship. I'm not going to treat you uh, as uh, the people as he did in the former days. He says, look, look at this. Here's a promise. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give its fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of this people to, be, to possess all these. Amen. He is going to be the cause of it. Amen. He is the one that's able to bring restoration. Amen. He's the one that's able, you know, to, to, uh, to, to bless, to bless his people. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass that just as you were cursed among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you shall be a blessing. And so God promises deliverance and he promised he's going to save them. But he also promises, promises them, he says, look, you no longer will be a curse, but you will be a blessing. Amen. And so, and that, you know, a, some of these, these are folks who just came out of captivity, you know, so um, uh, it might have been hard for them, you know, to, to really believe that, to hold on to it. But, you know, the reality is, hey, the just shall live by faith. What God wants to do, he's going to do by faith. Amen. And we got to we, we got to get to a place where we're going to believe God. And so, you know, this whole idea of restoration, he says, look, you've been a curse, but now you shall be a ble blessing. I'm going to save you. I'm going to deliver you. He says, uh, he says, uh, 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 do not fear. Let your hands be strong. All right. For thus says the Lord of hosts. Again, there's that phrase again. God is, God is speaking. God's releasing promises. Uh, unto his people. He's let, letting his people know exactly what he's going to do. Look at this. Just as I determined to punish you, all right? He says, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I would not relent. So again, in these days, now, you know, we got to, you know, uh, these days uh, would be in reference to uh, them coming out of captivity, partly, Okay, but also he's speaking futuristic, what he's going to do uh, in, 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 in times to come. He says, he says, uh, uh, okay, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. Look at that great promise. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's almost mind boggling, mind boggling that God says something like that. I'm determined to do good. I mean, and we, you know, that's, that's for emphasis. That's for them to, to be encouraged. I mean, because we, the reality is we know that God is good. You know, he can't be anything but good. But look at the promise says, look, I am determined to do you good. Amen. He will not be thwarted. Uh, he will not be stopped. Nothing's going to prevent him. You know, he is determined to do them good. My God, if God is determined to do us good, I mean, that just begins to blow my mind, you know, uh, uh, that he, again, the Bible said, what is man that thou art so mindful of him? You know, that God, God, God's determination, he's going to make things happen. He's going to bring these things to pass. All right. He's determined to, I'm determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. All right. Now, so God is saying, look, hey, I'm going to bring restoration. I'm going to bring blessings, but look, man, but there's still, there's still responsibility uh, on your part to live as kingdom people, all right? Uh, not, not the fasting, you know, that's hypocritical, you know, uh, uh, not going through rituals and all that kind of stuff, but having a genuine sincerity to honor and, 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 and to honor God. He said, these are the things you shall do. Look at this. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. And do not love a false oath. For all these things, for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. And so God, you know, God always wanted his people to get to be in a place that we would love what he loves and hate and hate what he hates. Amen. And so uh uh, if, if, if your love for sin is, you know, uh, is greater 
greater than your love for righteousness, then that's what you'll be bent on. That's what you'll have an incl inclination to do. And so he says, look, all these things I hate. God wants us to hate what he hates and love what he loves. All right. And so look at then verse 18. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, thus said the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be joy and gladness and cheerful peace for the house of Judah, therefore love, truth, and peace. Okay, so he's saying, no, weeping and fasting is not going, it's not going to continue. Okay, weeping is going to turn into joy uh, uh, and gladness, and fasting is going to turn into cheerful feasts. And so he says, look, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to shift. Okay, There's, it's not going to be a time of mourning and weeping. It's going to be a time where these, 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 the time of fasting will be a delight. It'll, it'll be a delightful, a delightful feast. Uh, look at this, 20, thus said the Lord of hosts. People shall yet come, verse 20, inhabitants of many cities, the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will, also, will go also. Yes, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Okay, now Zechariah has a vision of the millennial kingdom, all right? This book is, like I said, it's very prophetic. He has a vision of the millennial kingdom, that thing that's going to come to pass, you know, um, uh, long before, long after, you know, he has, he, he has died and gone, and, and gone on, you know, be with the fathers. But he's speaking, uh, he's speaking futuri futuristic. What's going to happen? When the King of Kings comes and to establish his, his kingdom and to reign over and to reign over all the earth, he says, Look, he says, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. God has a plan for Jerusalem. God has a purpose for Jerusalem. Amen. And um, you know, we may not, we may not be able to see the fulfillment of that right now, but when Jesus comes to set up his kingdom, uh, Jerusalem is going to be an integral part of what God's going to be doing uh, in the earth, all right? And verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from every language and of every, and, uh, 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 every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you. Why? For we have heard that God is with you, all right? Now, again, hey, this is futuristic. This is, this is, this is gonna be, you know, during the millennial reign uh, of, of Christ. Uh, uh, God's favor will be so on his people, amen. His favor will be so on his people that, look what it says. It says, in those days, 10 men from every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you. We have heard that God is with you, that God's favor is going to be upon the, uh, uh, is, the Jews in such a way, amen, uh, that folk will gravitate towards them, that folk wanna, are going to want to be with them. Why? Because they, they're going to recognize that God is with them. For we heard that God is with you. Hey, what 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 a testimony that would be for us even right now, uh, that are that are spirit filled, you know, that are part of God's kingdom, you know, that we live a life, that we live a life that exemplifies that God is with us, that the favor, the power, the anointing, the glory of God would be so upon us. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works and, and, and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, we ought to be living lives, man, such such kingdom lives. That, that people desire that. We, we are the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. Amen. And I'm not talking about, you know, living in mansions and, you know, driving, you know, uh, Bentleys and all that kind of stuff. But man, the power of God, the joy of the Lord, the peace of God, you know, uh, without a doubt, without a doubt, without a doubt, people will know that God is with us, how, how we live, how we, how we demonstrate the fruit of the spirit. Amen. 
uh, 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 the power, you know, that we have, the faith that we exhibit, amen, that, 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 that our lives, come on, would be a witness, would be a testimony uh, uh, that God, that the hand of God is upon our lives. The favor of God would be so upon them that uh, people from all over will come and gravitate towards them because they heard that God, God is, God is, God is with them. Amen. Hey, that should be our testimony, you know, that the Lord is with us, that the Lord makes, the Lord is the difference maker in our lives. We are who we are, and we are what we are, you know, by, by the power of God, you know, by, by, by submitting uh, to him and to his spirit, that he may work in us, uh, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. All right, and so, uh, uh, and so uh, Zechariah is, uh, is speaking to uh, his contemporaries, but he's also speaking in a sense that what God is going to be doing yet in the ages to, in the ages to come, all right? And so uh, chapter nine, he goes and he says, the burden of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus is resting place for the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord and against Hamath, which borders on it, against Tyre and Sidon, though they are very wise. For Tyre built itself a tower, heaped up silver like the dust and gold like the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord would cast her out. He would destroy her power in the sea and, he, and she will be devoured by fire. Ashkelon shall see it in fear. Gaza also shall be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for he dried up her expectation. The king shall perish from Gaza and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. A mixed race shall settle in Ashdod and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines and I will take away the blood from his mouth and the abomination from the tweet between his teeth. But he remains, even he shall be for our God. And so God is saying, look, in chapter, chapter nine, you know, um, he's going to defend Israel against all his enemies. He's going to bring judgment upon all these, upon all these, uh, uh, upon all these uh, 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 peoples. Understand, Israel was surrounded by enemies from the north, the south, east, and the west. Amen. And and um, and the only the only reason why the enemies could could even um, uh, have them. Uh, in bondage and captivity was because of their disobedience, their sin. It wasn't because they were, more, I mean, even though they were more powerful, but we know it's not by, it's not by, it's not by power. If God's for them, God fought for them, God brought deliverance in their lives when, when they were, uh, uh, you know, when they were the underdog, when they had the least amount of people, it was, it was their, 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 their disobedience, their rebellions, and allow these nations to judge them. And so God is saying, look, I'm going to bring retribution upon all these nations. All these nations that, uh, uh, that were enemies of God's people, he's going to deal, he's going to deal with all of them. All right? He's going to deal with all of them. And he says, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Now, you know, the Philistines were perpetual enemies against God's people. The Philistines were uh, and some of these cities were Philistine, you know, cities and nations. And God says, look, I'm going to even deal, I'm going to deal with them, you know, these uncircumcised Philistines. But look at this, something interesting. He says, the latter part is verse seven. He said, I will take away the blood from his mouth and the abomination from between his teeth, but he who remains, even he shall be for our God. And so God promised the promise that God makes here that even the Philistines will become a remnant for him. Amen. Even, even you know, and they were probably uh, uh, Israel's greatest uh, enemy. And God's saying that, hey, he shall be for our God, that the, a remnant, uh, he's going to bring forth um, a remnant, even from the Philistines, even those who are, who are totally against God. Amen. And so then he goes on to say, uh, for God, and he should be like a leader in Judah and Ekron, like a Jebusite. I will camp around my house because of the army, because of him who passes by and him who returns. No more shall an oppressor pass through them. 
for now I have seen with my eyes. And so now, you know, Zechariah begins to prophesy or speak about the coming of the king. Amen. And so, um, uh, uh, and as he speaks about the coming of the king, you know, the first reference is to Jesus coming in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. All right. And so, uh, and so now uh, Zechariah, his prophecy is, is in regards to Jesus and his triumphal en entry into, into, into uh, Jerusalem. Uh, this victorious uh, king who comes in, he'll be met with spontaneous shout and acclamations and praise and adoration, amen. And so uh, from his people, uh, and so he says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. Behold, your king is coming to you. Hey, uh, uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't speaking uh, in the sense that this, this was a right now prophecy. You know, uh, he's speaking, he's speaking uh, you know, prophetically. He's speaking, speaking to, to the future. This prophecy is, is about Jesus, you know, and um, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It says, look. Uh, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. All right. So if you go to Matthew 21, uh, Matthew 21. Beginning with verse one, uh, it says here, now when they drew near, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All, okay, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Uh, St. John chapter 12 uh, also speaks uh, in reference to that. St. John chapter 12, uh, speaking of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. St. John chapter 12, verse 12, the next day a great multitude that had came to the feast, that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found the young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. Behold, your king is coming. Hey, as Zechariah was prophesying, it wasn't going to be that day, it wasn't going to be next month, amen, but he was speaking prophetically about uh, uh, Jesus, the, the, because, hey, at that time, Israel had no king. Remember, they were, they were in captivity. They had, no, they had no king, all right? But he encourages them that your king is coming, amen. And he will be like no other king, amen. He'll be the king of kings and he'll be the Lord of lords, amen. Uh, and then he says, look, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. And so he says, look, I'm going to cut off chariots, horses, the battle bow, the battle bow, and weapons are no, are no, longer, no longer needed. Come on. He, why? Because he shall speak peace. He comes as Jehovah Shalom. 
He comes as a, as a king of peace. Amen. He's going to bring peace. The king whose kingdom is the whole earth will bring peace. Look what he says. He shall speak peace to the nations. Look, his dominion, okay? His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river and from the river to the ends of the earth. And so this king, hey, he has he has a kingdom. Amen. Not just not just relegated to Jerusalem, but every every nation from sea to sea, from the river uh, uh, to the ends of the earth. Amen. And so he, his dominion is going to be, uh, you know, is, is going to be uh, stretched out over all the earth. And he's going to speak. He's going to he's going to speak peace. He's going to bring. He's going to he's going to bring peace. And so then he says, as for you also, because of the blood of your covenant. Wow. This is this is this is really relevant. He said, because of you, because of you, because of the blood of your covenant. Now, most uh, most covenants were ratified by blood. Okay, it 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 needed uh, it needed blood to ratify, you know, the covenant. And he said, because of the blood blood covenant of your covenant, hey, they're going to receive blessings. They're going to receive favor. They're going to receive restoration because of the blood of your covenant, amen. And so uh, he says, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit, all right? So these prisoners were going to be those exiles, well, that were still in Babylon, all right? He says, look, I'm going to set your prisoners free. You know, God is going to do something for them because he's going to remember the blood covenant. He's going to do something for them because he's going to, He's going to, he's going to, you know, uh, he's going to bring forth, amen, the stipulation of the covenant that he made with his people. Praise God. Man, look, we, we ought to get excited because, because the blood covenant allows us to be, to be, to be so in tune with God, to be in such favor with God, even when we are not doing what we what we should be doing, or what we need to do, what God's going to remember is the blood covenant that He has that He's established with us, and God and God has established a blood covenant with us as the people of God. You know, in, in Matthew, uh, in Mark chapter fourteen, let's go there for a moment. Mark chapter fourteen, Mark chapter fourteen, uh, yep, Mark fourteen. And beginning with verse 23, Mark 14. Oh, yeah, we'll give me verse 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Verse 23, then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank from it. And he said to them, look at this, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Hey, the blood covers our sins. The blood justifies us. The blood brings us into a right relationship with Jesus. The blood means that uh, his, he, has, he, has, he has propitiated our sins. He has appeased, he, he appeased the holy God by his sacrifice, by his blood sacrifice. He has met all the demands that God, God wanted, that God demanded for, for holiness, amen. He has done everything for us, you know, by, by shedding his blood that brings us into a right relationship with Jesus. This status does not change. This status is not for a moment. It's not for a month. It's not for a week. It's not for a year, amen. He established a, a, an eternal, you know, uh, covenant with us because of the blood of Jesus, amen. And he said to them, because of the blood, Glory to God. And you and I can say the same thing because of the blood. We're not consumed. Because of the blood, he's not angry with us. Because of the blood, we're not, you know, disassociated from him. Because of the blood, 
Amen. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, it's because of the blood. The blood ratified the covenant. Jesus became that sacrifice for us. Amen. Jesus became that sacrifice. Jesus spoke of himself as being as a sacrifice whose blood would ratify a new covenant, a new promises that God has given unto you and I. And he says, I will be your God and you shall be my sons and daughters. And this blood covenant, amen, that God has established by his own blood frees us. And he says, look, you will no longer be prisoners, amen. Because of the blood covenant, I'm going to free you. He Zechariah says, I'm going to free you, you know, from being, from being prisoners. We are free. Those who come to Christ in faith, amen, we're freed from being prisoners. We're free from being in bondage, amen. Why? Because of the blood. The blood set us free. The blood uh, uh, extricated us. The blood, you know, allowed us, you know, um, uh, liberty and freedom, amen. And so we, 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 uh, we ought to be grateful for the blood, amen. We ought to be so thankful for the blood, amen, the blood of Jesus. And so he speaks about because of the blood covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the warless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I restore double to you. Isaiah spoke about, you know, the people um, receiving double for their sins. But here the Lord speaks about, hey, look, I'm going to restore double to you. Hallelujah. This is, this is, this is restoration. Restoration is never bringing us back to the same state. Restoration always is bringing, bringing us back to a better state, to a greater state. He says, look, I'll restore double to you. Why? Because God, God cut covenant. God made a covenant. Amen. He ratified it by his blood. Amen. And so even, even though they, they had to go through uh, captivity and, 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 and exile, but God says, I'm going to restore. It's another promise that he gives. I'm going to restore double to you. Amen. God is a God that, God is a God who restores. Amen. Twofold. Come on, double. Hey, Job got double for all that he went through. Amen. You know, God, if you're going through something, hey, don't give up. Don't throw the towel and don't quit. Amen. If you do, you're going to miss your double blessing. Amen. You're going to miss what God wants to do that's exceeding abundantly for all that we may have to think. Amen. He's not going to just come in with some pity patty stuff and just deal with us, you know, um, you know, to, to pacify us, but he's coming and he's going to do even greater than we could even anticipate or that we can even believe. He says, I'm going to give you double. I'm going to restore double to you. Hey, man. Hey, anybody here needs God to restore double to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for God to restore double. Every time I'm in trouble, every time the enemy's coming after me, it's time to rejoice. It's not a time to quit. It's not a time to give up. It's not a time to stop coming to church. It's not a time to, 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 to pout. It's not a time to, you know, just sit it, uh, sit at home and mope and, and, and feel sorry for yourself and have, and have, you know, uh, you know, a, a pity party for yourself. It's time to rejoice. Why? Because God is about to bring double. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Restoration. He's bringing double. He said, I restore double to you. For I have bent Judah, my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. Look at this. Then the Lord will be seen over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will blow the trumpet, and with the whirlwinds, and go with the whirlwind from the south. The Lord of hosts will defend them. Hallelujah. He will defend them. They shall devour and subdue with sling stones. They shall drink and roar as if with wine. They shall be filled with blood like basins, like the corners of the altar. Look at this. The Lord, their God, will save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be like jewels of a crown, lifted like a banner over his head. God promised he will deliver Israel and call his people to sparkle 
like jewels, like jewels in a crown. He said, I'm gonna cause you to sparkle like jewels in a crown. For, look, look at Zechariah's response. Verse 17, how great is, is its goodness and how great is beauty. Come on, when God brings restoration, he's gonna make, he's going to cause his people to sparkle like jewels in a crown. He says, look, how great is beauty. How great is his goodness? I mean, that's all, that's all I can say. This is just too wonderful. This is just magnificent. Amen. Grain shall make the young men thrive and new wine the young women. All right. And so God, God promises deliverance. God promised to bring double for all that they've gone through. And, and look, they, and they went through a lot. Amen. And so the Bible speaks about, hey, look, you know, uh, the sufferings that we go through aren't even worthy to be compared to the glory that God has in store for us, amen. And oftentimes we can't see the glory. We can't see that God is going to put us, amen, uh, uh, cause us to sparkle like jewels in a crown, that God has something, a plan for us, amen. He didn't start the work in us, not to finish it, amen. He's gonna finish it. The psalmist says he will not forsake the works of his hands, amen. God is not in the business of forsaking his people. Say, that's why Paul says, therefore now there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. We go through this whole thing of being condemned because you know uh, we weren't doing things right. And God is figuring out a way how to bless us. He's figuring out a way how to bring us up out of that, out of that, out of that mindset. You know, he's determined. Yeah, yeah, he says, I'm determined to do your good. Amen. And and even some of us have, have determined to do wrong, just as you have been determined to do wrong, God is even more determined to do you good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. He, he's determined to do us good. Restoration is going to come. And so chapter 10 talks about the restoration, the restoration of Israel. And so he says in verse one, ask the Lord for rain. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain in the field uh, for everyone. Grass in the field for everyone. And so God says, no, ask for rain. You know, we got to ask for rain. We got to ask, you know, for God to do things in our lives. Amen. God is waiting for us to ask. He, he challenges us to put our faith to action. Amen. If you really believe, then, then ask me. Okay. God says, ask for, ask, ask for rain. And, you know, so during, uh, in ancient Israel, you know, they didn't have irrigation systems. All right. And so, uh, and they rely, rain was important in order for, uh, in order for the crop to grow. If there was a drought, they were in trouble, okay? There was no other means of, 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 of providing water. And so uh, he says, he says, so Israel had to rely both on the former rain and the latter rain, all right? Uh, 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 and so uh, he says the former rain would come in, in, in autumn, the latter rain would come in, in, in the spring, all right? So they needed the former and the latter rain. God says, ask for rain. Hey, what do you need? What do you need that you've been fearful to ask God for? Amen. God is the one that's going to provide. God says, ask me for something that only I can provide. Okay. Ask me for something that only I can do. Okay. He challenges his people and he says, I want you to ask. For, I want you to ask for rain, all right? Look what it says here. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of latter rain. Look what it says. Look what it says here. I like what it says. He says, uh, he will, the Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain. Somebody was, I think somebody gave a prophetic word on Sunday that God was going to, you know, shower us, amen. And so uh, he's going to, He's going to give them showers of rain 
Look at this. Grass in the field for everyone. Okay. The Lord challenges his people. He says, will you be bold enough? Will you have, will you have, will you be audacious enough to ask me? Okay. Look, call and I will answer you. All right. Maybe sometimes we're not getting an answer because we're not calling. All right. He says, look, call, I will answer you. Come on. I will answer your prayer. He says, I will provide what only I can provide. Ask, ask, look, and I like what it says. He says, look, ask the Lord. Ask Jehovah. Ask Yahweh for rain. Come on. Let your confidence be in him. You know, not, not in man, not in things. Let your confidence, let your trust be. Actually, God said, let it be in me. God would say, let it be in me. You know, uh, pull on me. Put a demand on me. Ask me. Come on. I want to, I want to do good. I want to do good to you. I want to provide for you. But you have not simply because you ask not. Okay? He says, no, ask, ask for rain. Come on. Ask God for the impossible. Okay? Ask God for, for uh, because with God, all things are possible. Ask God to do something, you know, um, unprecedented in your life. Come on. Ask, ask God to blow your mind. Ask God to do something that you know uh, uh, that only he can do. Amen. Don't, don't limit God. Don't, 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 don't limit God. Take the limits off. Look, he's, he's almost begging them. Ask the Lord for rain. Look at this. He says, he, and look, he will give them showers of rain and grass in the field. Look at this. Don't miss that. Grass in the field for everyone. And so God's idea of, of equality means abundance for everyone. Glory to God. Come on. Abundance for everyone. He says there'll be grass in the field for everyone. That means that God is supplying, supplying for everybody, for everyone. Amen. You see, God wants all of us to receive the abundance. He wants all of us to receive that kind of abundance and overflow. And so, uh, and so in verse two, verse two to five, verse, verses two to five, he says, for the idols speak delusion, diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. And so he speaks about, so the people, the people have been uh, asking idols. They've been, they've been inquiring of idols. They, they, you know, and so you may say, well, you know, uh, I don't have any idols. Well, hey, when you, when you trust your Mac card, not your Mac card, when you trust uh, American Express, uh, 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 Visa, Master Charge, come on, when you trust them more than God, and then the blessing of the Lord, what? Make us rich and out of no sorrow. So when you trust Visa and, 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 and MasterCard, it's going to come with an 18%, a 20%, a 25% interest. Come on, somebody. Daily compound. Hey, it'll put you in debt, you know, for a year to come. He says, look. And so you may not say, you know, I'm worshiping an idol. Hey, but that Mac card becomes your idol. Why? Because you place that above God. That 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 American Express becomes your idol. Why? Because you place that above God. Above God. God says, "Ask, ask me. You got a need? Do you have a need? Did not God say, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus?" Amen. And so and so for some of us, those those easy ways. I don't have the money, but I got the card. I can get what I want. That car becomes your idol. Okay, God says, don't ask Visa. Don't ask, don't ask American Express. Ask me to do something in your life, amen, that will, uh, that will cause me to bless you, all right? And so they were going to idols. They were seeking after idols. And it's interesting because idols, idols in this, uh, the word for idols is, is uh, uh, teraphim, and, and it means household idols household idols. So they all had these idols in their house, okay? And they and they worshiped them. And they were uh, 
uh, uh, seeking them for direction and uh, yeah, for direction. All right. So he says, idols speak delusions. The diviners envision lies. They tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wend their way like sheep. They're, they're in trouble because there is no shepherd. All right. So he says, look, uh, diviners consult the spirits of idols to predict the future. In essence, God warns his people that there is no real, there's no real help in them. Okay. He says, first of all, they tell false dreams. They tell false dreams, the diviners. And then secondly, he says, there, there's no real comfort in them. In verse, uh, latter part of verse two, they tell false dreams. They, they comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wend their way like sheep. They are troubled because there is no shepherd. And that is, and that becomes crucial. There is no shepherd. Amen. The people had to listen to these false and deceptive leaders. Uh, and, 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 and part of that was because there was no godly leadership, no godly shepherd. Okay. Now, look what, look what he says here uh, in verse three. My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat herds. For the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and make them as his royal horse in the battle. Glory to God. Look at this promise. He says to them, in, in, in God's goodness, in God's favor, in God's mercy, he says, I'm going to take my flock. I'm going to take my people. I'm going to transform them. Look what he says. I'm going to transform them from a flock of sheep to a herd of war horses ready for battle. That, he says, look, he says, uh, and will make them, for the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal horse in battle. That God is going to bring such a transformation uh, to these people. He says, look, he goes on to say, uh, yeah, from him comes the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler together. Come on. They shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies. What a transformation that's going to take place. They're going to be like mighty men that will take down their enemies. From him comes the cornerstone. Well, who's that? Jesus is the cornerstone. Come on, behold, I laid in Zion a, 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 cor a chief stone, a cornerstone. Amen. Isaiah, you know, uh, speaks about that. Look at Isaiah uh, 28. Isaiah 28, verse 16. Jesus is that cornerstone. Isaiah 28. Uh, verse 16, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a tri-stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Jesus is that cornerstone. He's the foundation. He's the standard. Amen. It says, then he goes on to say, uh, from him, the tent peg. Well, Jesus is the tent peg. He holds all things securely. Amen. He holds all things together. Look at Isaiah uh, 22, uh, verses 23 and 24. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious stone to his father's house. They will hang on him, all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity from the cups to all the pitchers. He's the tent peg. He's the one that holds all things together. He's the one that holds all things securely. He, said, he says, from the tent peg, from him, the battle bow, all right? Jesus is the battle bow. He's a strong fighter for good. Look at Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. 
beginning with the first verse, Isaiah 63, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your apparel red and your garments like the one who treads uh, the wine press? I have trodden the wine press alone, and from the peoples no one was with me, for I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments, and I have stained all my robes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem has come. He is the battle bow. Look at Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. We're going to look at verse 19, 16. Okay. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords amen he's the one that's going to fight our battles amen he's going to rule he's going to rule with a rod of iron he treads the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of the almighty god amen jesus is the leader of every ruler. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me let me go back to uh, yeah, Revelation 19, 19. Uh, I'm going to begin with verse 11. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven clothed uh, in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he will strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is not only our battle bow, but he also is the leader and ruler uh, over, uh, over his people, amen? He is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. And so, um, and then going back to Zechariah, uh, he says, <laughs> From him, every ruler, verse five, they shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle they shall fight because the Lord is with them and the riders on the horses shall be put to shame. I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph. I will bring them back because I have mercy on them. Then uh, they shall be as though I had not cast them aside from the Lord their God, and I will hear them. You know, he speaks about, amen, how he's going to gather. He's going to gather them together. And he says, look, it's going to be like I've never cast them aside. When God, when God brings restoration, he brings full, he brings full restoration. He says in uh, verse, uh, those of Ephraim will be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as if with wine. Yes, your children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord. I will whistle for them and as they once increase. I will sow them among the peoples and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live 
together with their children and they shall return. And we know that Israel, God scattered them. You know, even Peter talked about, you know, the tribes that are scattered abroad. But God said, they'll remember me. No matter where they go, they will indeed remember me. He's going to strengthen the house of Judah. The promise uh, 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 for God to, you know, to strengthen them uh, is, 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 is reiterated. Amen. He says, your children will see and be glad in their heart. He said, I will whistle. I will gather them and they shall remember me in the far places wherever I have sent them. Okay. I will whistle for them and gather them. The promise to gather Israel is so uh, repetitive in scriptures. All right. It, it, it's, it's often in the prophecies of the new covenant that God, is, that God has established. They will remember me in far countries and come back to the land. He said, I will strengthen them and they will walk up and down in his name. Hallelujah. He says, he says uh, uh, in verse 10, I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon and no more room is found for them until no more room is found for them. He shall pass through the sea with afflictions and strike the waves of the sea all the depths of the river shall dry up, and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. So I will strengthen them in the Lord. Look at this. And they shall walk up and down in his name, says the Lord. What a difference. They'll be so, so um, uh, embedded in Christ. Amen. They said they will walk up and down in his name. They're going to have a confidence. They're going to have an assurance that the Lord is with them. That the Lord is going to sustain them. The Lord is going to keep them. You know, they're not going. They're, uh, they're not going to be fearful any longer. All right. They won't. Uh, God, when God gathers Israel, He will defeat their enemies. They shall walk in freedom. They shall walk in liberty. They shall not walk in fear. Come on. You know, God is saying this is going to be like a uh, like a new Exodus for them. He says. He says. Uh, 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 and the, uh, He talks about. All he says, uh, yeah, he shall pass, 11, he shall pass through the sea with affliction and strike the waves of the sea that, that will cause him to reflect on what he did when he brought them out of, when he brought them out of Egypt, amen, and how they, and how they crossed the Red Sea. This, this is going to be, this, this is going to be, uh, uh, this deliverance that God's going to bring is going to be complete with Exodus-like Exodus miracles, amen, that will, that will incur or that will gender uh, uh, faith and confidence in God, uh, 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 believing that God, you know, is going to do everything and fulfill all the promises that um, he, had, uh, he had given unto them. And so he said, I will strengthen them in the Lord and they shall walk up and down, walk up and down, walk up and down, amen, in his name. The Lord is going to, he's going to visit his people. And he's going to bring shepherds uh, uh, after his own heart that will minister to his people, that will feed, feed his people. And so uh, Zechariah is saying to them, be encouraged. The king is coming. He's, he's coming. And he's going to reign in righteousness. He's going to rule over many nations. Amen. And he's coming to speak peace. Uh, uh, even though they're living, they were living in difficult times, they're living in transition. Some just coming out of exile, but God speaks promises. Remember chapter eight, he gives all those promises and it's confirmed by, for thus says the Lord. Amen. For thus says the Lord. When God says it, we can depend on it. And we know that it's going to come to pass. Amen. Because it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. It's impossible for God to lie. Amen. So by, the Bible says, by two immutable things, amen, uh, God has spoken to us and confirmed his word, amen? And so uh, uh, your king is coming, amen. Uh, our, 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 king, our king has come in one sense, but it's not, it's, 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 not total, it's not total consummation yet. Our king is coming. Hey, we win. We will always win. The victory, the victory has already has already been given, and so that's why he says, you know, uh, 
So you are crowded, you, you, you know, you're surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses. Run the race that's set before you. Look unto Jesus. Why? He's the author and the finisher of your faith. He that began the work in you, he's going to complete it. Amen. Our king will reign. Amen. And he will speak peace even unto us. All right. So we're going to stop there for tonight. Uh, yeah. All right. Any questions? Any? Yeah. Oh my God, a bishop. The fact that we can walk up and down in this name. Wow. Isn't, isn't that powerful? Wow. Yes. Walk up and down in his name. Wow. <laughs> wow. I yeah. see me, I see me floating. Oh my God. <laughs> That was powerful. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the fact that we can ask, we have but to ask. Mm -hmm. We have but to ask. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bishop. Bishop. Yes. Uh, quick lesson. Um, I like the fact that you said that uh, in the word that God gives us the authority, you know, to ask. And uh, that's very important, especially during these times, you know. Sometimes we, we kind of lose focus on the fact that, you know, we know we can ask, but we don't really ask as we ought. So uh, thank you for uh, bringing that point out about we do have the authority to ask, you know. And, and do, we, do we ask for big things? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, do we, do we ask for what is impossible? Mm -hmm. What only God, for only what God can do. And so right. some of us are just safe not to ask at all, not to ask at all. It's, that's a safe place to be. So okay. if we don't get anything, then we, we're, not, we're not disappointed. Right. We, when God is challenging us, mm -hmm. when he says, you know, ask for rain, only God could produce rain. Amen. That's only right. God could water the crops. Amen. Amen. Put, put it, you know, take God at his word. You know, let's 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 believe God. I'm right. believing God with um Sister Malora. She said when she said a million dollars, billion. I immediately billion. Went, billion. Went, went right <laughs> to the I believe billion. God. Yeah. Amen. 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 God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have it, but he got it. That's right. He can he can produce it for us. He can bring it to pass. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God Thank for the Bishop. blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank Hallelujah. God for the blood. Amen. And amen. Look what he says. And the he says, and as for you, as for mm -hmm. you, remember the blood covenant. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, as for you, remember the blood covenant. You know, the devil is a liar. He condemns us. He's accused of the brethren. You know, he brings up all this stuff in our lives. But remember the blood covenant. Right. Amen. The blood covers that. The blood took care yeah. of that. It's, Take it's, care. Oh, come on. It's, oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. We need, we Thank need you, Lord. Get beyond that. Hey, the Hallelujah. blood took care of that. Thank you. Don't Hallelujah. live in Thank condemnation. You, don't live in guilt. Don't live in shame. Come on. Don't live in disgrace. Oh. Remember the blood oh. covenant. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the thing about the blood covenant is this. God established it. Yes. He didn't establish it. When he established that covenant with, with Abraham, mm -hmm. Abraham was asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the two dogs or two turtles that whatever were killed. He was asleep. Amen. Mm -hmm. God established it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I, Bishop, that's what I was thinking of when you were talking about the, you know, how God, even Philistines, the remnant he's going to bring in. And all I could think about was that scripture where he talks to Abraham, in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Israel fiercest enemies. God mm -hmm. says, even some of those, <laughs> he's, yes. going to pray. he's going to redeem. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isaiah says, like our thoughts, he his ways like always. That was all reference to salvation. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some people we think don't have a snowball chance. Mm -hmm. They're going to get to heaven before you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's stomping ground. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I think, uh, oh, the best. Paula, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. Question. I thought you had a question. I kind of did. Um, remember when we had the teaching and there were 
um, we were told that sometimes um, um, God is speaking to Israel. It's not always for new covenant believers. And I've always thought that because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he, um, his blessings are the same, that we as um, new covenant believers can claim some of those old covenant uh, promises simply because God is immutable. Now, um, I'm not always sure when he's speaking only specifically to Israel and when he's speaking to, um, you know, in general, but I do, I personally believe that if God is the same God, he can do, if he did it before, he can do it again. Amen. And we can claim some of those promises mm -hmm. simply because he's God and we're his children. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, we need, we need to understand when God is specifically speaking to, to not, not only just to Israel, but even uh, sometimes when he's speaking, uh, even in the New Testament, you know, he, he may be speaking to a specific condition and situation, you know, it doesn't mean we can't draw, you know, principles. I think we can we can draw principles. Mm -hmm. you know, hey, God's faithfulness. Exactly. God's mm -hmm. faithfulness. Mm -hmm. he, he was faithful in the old covenant. Mm -hmm. He's faithful in the new covenant. Yes. That's, that's a yes. Amen. His mercy. That's Say a God. you know that's that's a principle. Mm -hmm. he, he was merciful. As a matter of fact, you know, he was more merciful in the old covenant than he was in the new covenant. And we, and we, don't, we, don't, we don't, because on the old covenant, they should have been killed. And many, and often, often when they That's repented, right. God, true. God, God, God relented. When they repented, God didn't give them what they deserved. That's right. It's true, Bishop. And we were never, we were never bound by, you know, by that, by that law. You know, yeah. the law demanded that, you know, it be done. Right. You know, That's right. We see over and over again. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, God had a plan even for the Gentiles in the old, in the old covenant. That's right. Abraham right. was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Wow. He was he was a he was an idol worshiper. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and so God always had a plan. But God's ultimate plan was to have one church made of Jew, Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, so we, we so I think we 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 got to have discernment if you know uh, you know. Uh, you know, uh, you know, when when God when God says certain things to either, either to a, uh, to a people or to a nation, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 we 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 need to understand that that may not be for everybody, right? Right, and so and I think you know you, um, you know, you know, uh, you know God God not changing. Means that hey, his nature is not his nature is not going to change. Right. Who he is not right. going to be. He's going to be he's going to be the same uh, always. But mm -hmm. he's going to move differently. Hebrews says God, who has sundry times in diverse manners spoke to us by the prophets, right. now speaks unto us by His Son. Right. 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 In diverse ways and different times and so mm -hmm. forth. And um, uh, but I think um, I mean I, I, I'm trying to I could give some. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, eight, they had they had to offer a sacrifice. You know, whether for 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 a tomb, whatever. Well, you know, that's not that's not for us to offer sacrifices. You know, the law wasn't the law wasn't wasn't for us. You know, um, uh, you know, and so we need we need to make sure that even in New Testament, we can take something that God is speaking. In a specific way, you know, like mm -hmm. you know, people like to say, "Well, I'm walking around, you know, um, I'm walking around, whatever, seven times, and I expected to fall." Well, you know, God was really that was something that happened at a certain time, and we we can we can extract principles from that, but you know, God's not obligated to give us a building because we walked around there seven times and shot mm -hmm. it, you know, you know, on the seven times, shot it seven times. Because that's what he did at a specific time for a specific purpose and so forth. So, but you'll still have to navigate through that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And our sister, our sister Paulette, um, 
Uh, not only uh, when you were talking about, you know, asking for promises, Bishop alluded to something when he said, ask God for bigger things and possible mm -hmm. things. In yeah. our covenant, we have better promises. Yeah. So God Absolutely. expects us to ask for stuff that, that, that he will do that's even beyond what he did in the Old Testament because we have a better covenant. So you can go to God and ask for bigger things than what they did in the Old Covenant because we have a better covenant. Okay, here comes that billion. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> okay. Let's get on board. Let's let's touch and agree. Amen. 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 Yep. <laughs> Impossible. We got no. okay. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, no. Another comment where it said um, they shall be the jewels of a crown. Um, there is a song in the Broadman hymnal, um, when he cometh, when he cometh to bring, make up his jewels, all his jewels, all right. jewels yeah. yeah, to love and oh, pure ones. Yeah, right. And it, it just reminded me of this song we used to sing in Shiloh, and I used to um, try to figure out how we were going to be jewels, but mm -hmm. I know what he's meaning, what his um, intention is as he's speaking about jewels here. But it, what a beautiful thought that we are God's jewels. Yeah. 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 Precious. We're each very think, about, think about jewels and diamonds. When you go into a diamond store or jewelry store, as soon as the light hits them, they shine with yeah, well, yeah, so we're all, when, we, when, when God shines his light on us, we will sparkle. That's how wow. we that's how we become the light of the world because wow. his, his light shines Amen. and we as jewels sparkle with it. We are jewels, precious Amen. jewels. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that teaching, Amen. Bishop. Thank that you. Was, that was me. That was some serious meat. <laughs> I hear you pass the meat talk. Yeah, and, 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 and it wasn't vegan, it was meat. <laughs> and I'm on the I'm on the Hey, man, pass the meat talk. Amen. So um, the uh, training for AV had to be rescheduled for Saturday morning at nine o'clock. So if you're interested in uh, helping out in that ministry, Saturday morning at nine at the church, all right? And uh, the uh, event for um, uh, Laquita uh, has been uh, canceled. So it's not happening on Saturday. Oh. Any other, uh, and don't forget, woo, I can't wait till Saturday. I mean, Sunday, I can't wait till Saturday because next day is Sunday. So I'm gonna be ready. I might go out and buy me a new suit. I don't know. <laughs> you probably already got one. Probably so. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> you probably got one. Probably yeah. got one. Look, uh, don't, don't limit God. He's able to do it. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's the we got, we got one. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 tough. it's all right. We know he's an abundant guy. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, and remember, if you're 70 and above, we are honoring you. Yes. Amen. Woo! I just Woo! found out today that um that Sister Zelfia is 80 years old. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. Wow. You would never guess it in wow. more than a million years. Wow. Wow. Yep. Um, that's, that's male and female, all right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, John. Male and female. <laughs> you hear that, Brother John? Brother John. Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh -huh. Hey, one thing about Household of Faith, look, there's an anointing. There's an anointing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Youth. Mm -hmm. Youthfulness on Household of Faith. We yes. Have the most yes. Youthful looking state <laughs> in, in the whole wide world. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir. You never he, get He's on the Sarah. He's on the Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, we got we got some fine looking 
Yeah. Some handsome guys. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anointing. Amen. You don't need to go and get that, uh, what's that thing? That water that gives you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't need that water. <laughs> we don't need that water. <laughs> I don't need it. God, <laughs> we have anointing. Hey, I'm, it's I'm, oil. I'm doing everything I can to make mm. Sunday one of the most glorious days wow. in our church history. I'm so excited wow. about wow. about. <laughs> Serving and ministering to our saints. Amen. 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 Let's let's be a tremendous blessing, you know, um, to them. Thank you. Let's let's Amen. let's come and show up. Let's 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 yeah. be there and support them. Amen. Let's let's enjoy them. Amen. As God gives them to us. Amen. Praise Amen. 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 I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> we can I, tell. I, I oh, it's exciting. I better get a new dress. <laughs> they will still have this when I turn 80. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, minute, uh, Pastor Gwen, for putting all that together and all yes. this. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Thank you. I salute you guys. Amen. Thank you. Are we salute thank you so much. You know, you know, I'm in that number too. So if y'all see, y'all see me sit down, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm hey, Pastor plus. Gwen. Hey, Pastor yes. Gwen. Yes. Can I get a discount? Uh, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna bring you some chicken nuggets. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I'll be uh, on the kitty side. <laughs> <laughs> The best part about it, the best part about it is our young people have agreed and committed to to serve our oh, faith. Oh, amen. Amen. Hey, 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 yeah. Amen. Everyone, amen. everyone All right. that I asked, they said, "Okay, yes, yes." Oh, so I'm oh amen. That's so, so wonderful. Yeah. 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 And so oh. I can't wait. The young people are gonna, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Get out. That's right. But who's who's the oldest? <laughs> Sister Dottie. No. Nope. Sister Dottie nope. not said nothing. She ain't saying nothing. That's the one. <laughs> no hands went up. Who's the oldest? Huh. Sister Dottie. How old are you, Sister Dottie? You you only 70, right? <laughs> <laughs> If if my life is spared until January the seventeenth, I will be. Uh, what will I be? Eighty-eight. Wow! <laughs> wow. wow. See, <laughs> just what you just said. We should never believe it. No way in the world. Mrs. It ain't too late for me. <laughs> what about what about thank you? How was thank you? How was thank you? Oh, Dankus, Dankus, Dankus. Oh, uh, next oh, no. uh, January. I'm I 87. Wow. I don't think God. she's older than that. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. How old is uh, Mother Dolores? She's 90 something. Wow. Ooh, wow. Ooh. 90 years. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Are they coming? Oh, yeah, we're going to pick them come. up. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to pick them up. Uh, a little into the service because they can't. Mother Dolores yeah. said she can't stay, you know, stay up that long. So we're gonna pick mm -hmm. up like twelve thirty. I don't know. Who is that? Mother Morris's mom. Oh, 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 she's coming. Oh, oh, yeah. She's coming. Oh, wow. She's coming. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah, boy, what a party. Nice. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Wow. Mm. Uh, here we go again. We just had impromptu fellowship. <laughs>